I know that this is annoying if you just switch to the program, so I'm going to get this handled right up front, even though it'll most likely destroy my audience retention on this video. If you just want to get your project out of Resolve, you come down to this rocket, click it, add a name to your file and set its location, then click Add to Render Queue, and then Render All. That's it. But if you stick around, I'll show you some common problems people run into. I'll walk you through the deliver page so you know what you're looking at and how to use some of the tools that they give you. And at the end of this video, I'll mention that I have a link in the description to my Buy Me A Coffee page. So let's get into part one, common problems. The first problem we're going to be talking about is definitely the most common one I get questions about. Everything looks fine, but when you actually start the render, it only takes like 0.0 seconds and the file it exports is about a second long. This is generally not what we're after and the cause is in out points. If we look at this little drop down menu right here, we'll see that it says render only in out points. If we change that to render entire timeline, then try again, we'll be good to go. Next up in our common problems, we have the why the heck did it export as a bunch of chunks and not just one video problem. This one you fix by making sure that you're not rendering as individual clips right here. You don't want individual clips checked, and while you're actually looking at checkboxes, another commonly needed fix lies right here in the audio tab. If export audio isn't checked, it won't export the clip with audio, and apparently for some people, it just randomly unchecks that for no reason. So it's worth double checking before you spend four hours waiting for a render to complete. Those are the most common problems I've seen, but by no means is that an exhaustive list. So if you run into any fresh frustrations, feel free to hit me up in the comments. Part two, the deliver page. The panels on this page are pretty straightforward, and if your layout doesn't look like this, you can get it to match mine by coming up to Workspace and pressing Reset UI Layout. With the default layout on, we have this Render Settings panel over here, a viewing window in the central panel, our Render Queue panel over here on the right, and at the bottom, we have our timeline. We can't do any editing in the timeline on this page other than setting the in and out point like we talked about earlier, so it's really just here for reference. The changes we'll make on this page happen in the render settings panel. Even if you're absolutely brand new to video editing, a few of these will be pretty self-explanatory and some of them you won't need to touch for quite some time. For example, file name is where you type in your file's name. As we move down the list though, we'll get into some things that are a little bit less beginner friendly, but they don't need to be intimidating. Since this is a beginner tutorial, I won't be going too in depth into a lot of these things, but I'll give you the gist. Your format will determine the file type your rendered file ends up with. So if you choose QuickTime, you'll get a .mov file, and if you choose MP4, you'll get a .mp4 file. If you're just uploading to YouTube or making home videos, either of these will be fine, but I find that MP4 is more compatible across more devices. Codec and encoder can be left where they are for a basic render, and resolution and frame rate should match that of your project. If you try to make this bigger than your project, you'll lose quality because it only has so many pixels to use. Quality right here is where you set your bitrate. And typically, Automatic Best gives pretty good results, but if you need a smaller file size and it's okay if you get some artifacting in there or just a general reduction in quality, then you can restrict it to a lower number. I often find myself lowering this to numbers around 10 if I need to send a short video over Discord and don't want to have to be reminded that they only take 8 megabytes or less. Everything under this we'll also ignore because it's generally going to be something that you won't need until you have an understanding of them anyway. You are able to export exclusively audio from Resolve if you come up to these presets. Once you're there, if you scroll all the way over, you'll see audio only. You'll want to change the format to WAV, then add to Render Queue and Render All as you normally would. And if you want to export your video with transparency, you can go ahead and watch this video that I made for you next. Also, it would be awesome if you'd consider buying me a coffee with the link in the description if the video was helpful for you. I'll see you in the next one.